important is if we take those technical skills and use them to express our own personal vision, to express what's in our hearts. Hey guys, Bo here, and this is Things I Learned with Miracle's Juggernaut in 710. The start of the game is very interesting for offlaners, the way the Pangolier offlane pulls is great and can even make highly skilled players make mistakes. He shows up at the start here and disengages, giving a false sense of security for the Disruptor that marches towards the right side of the map. He re-engages and notice that since he does that, he takes way less harass. It's interesting to see that Miracle last hits under tower. From all heroes, Jugger is probably one of the safest to last hit under tower. 5 armor and very little damage variance makes it quite likely that he'll get the last hits anyways. But pay attention to how he does it. He always right clicks once since his damage is so low, but notice that he waits some tower hits before going for the first hit and that's to account for tower damage variance. Sometimes the towers can deal too much damage and you might actually lose one last hit if you right click right at the beginning when he's full because then there's no going back on the damage that to add it. Nicely done, and he quickly grabs himself a Qualum Blade in the side shop. The downside of less hitting under tower is that the lane will inevitably push, and honestly, I'm not sure I can explain why he does it like this. Miracle is known for having strong opinions about stuff, and in a lot of the replays I've watched from him, he would less hit under tower rather than just drag the creeps around, especially if he's playing a melee core with low damage variants. The way he deals with things is actually pushing the second wave aggressively so that his creeps pushing to the enemy tower, eventually pushing the wave back to his side. After the second wave, what he does is manage manually fine-tune the wave so that he gets to the perfect spot. Thanks to that, he eventually manages to acquire two enemy range creeps and he gets to the perfect spot at around 3 minutes. Notice that since he has that now, he starts harassing the Pangolier while until this point he played quite passively. Having two range creeps allows you to go after the enemy since you have so much pushing power in the enemy side that you can draw aggro a couple of times and it won't affect the creep equilibrium. I'm a big fan of how Miracle buys his Yasha. You buy the band of elf skin on the side shop so he brings the recipe and the blade before completing the full item to speed up his power spikes. Yes, in this game he goes for Sanjun Yasha first item, he has a Magnus which means that Battle Fury is not necessary, and in this game the tankiness from Sanjun Yasha is pretty good. After you have Yasha, say he gives you 16 strength for 1900 gold, which is the best bang for your buck in terms of HP and being an actual item that works on Juggernaut. There's not a lot of stuff that you can actually dispel with Manta here and there's a lot of instant disables, so having HP is better than having the dispel. As I said, against two instant disabled heroes like Rubik and Shadow Shaman paired with the burst damage from Quop, Sanjan Yasha is probably a better choice than Diffusal, the item you would usually see on Juggers that had Magnuses in their teams back in the day. I'm not saying it's a bad item, but it makes sense this game, especially against three cores with escapes that don't care about Diffusal Blade. This is a great showing of reacting and playing around your enemies. Pangolier died just now and he TP'd top, but that means that the offlane is empty and Miracle pressures the tower immediately. He clears the creeps with Blade Fury since he has vision of a lot of enemies in the mid lane and also turns his Ekila on to increase the creep's armor. He cuts a tree when he gets repelled and that's very important. Let's watch that in slow motion. If you're careful enough, we see that he chooses a brown tree instead of a normal one and that might look ordinary at first, but look at Miracle's name. Dayman means Sir in English. Okay, going back to the game, pay attention how he gets his Yasha instantly and faster than if he bought it when he had the full gold for the item. And he tries to go for a solo kill. It was nicely played by both sides. Miracle clears the melee creeps before going for it and he was expecting the Pangolier to run away. But before we even talk about this not going perfectly for for him, pay attention how Miracle doesn't just Omni Slash instantly. He knows OP Buckle is ready and Pango can use that to disengage. So he starts right clicking to maybe bait the skill first. When he crits, he decides that Omni Slash will probably secure the kill so he goes for it but the last bounce fails. Another important point to talk about is him checking Pango's inventory, looking for maybe a fully charged magic wand or a salve, knowing that there is no weird play, he can dive Pango Lee here, quite deep here, and he gets the kill eventually. This is quite common, but since I see it so often on Legend and below players, look how the healing ward being leveled so highly allows Jugger to take this huge stack even without a battle fury. The overall increasing damage after one point in your crit is very underwhelming and the fact that you can healing ward while blade fury now just makes this a super valuable skill. He also finishes the Sanjin Yasha the same way we saw him finishing the Yasha by completing it in the side shop which is pretty cool and thanks to that the ward and the fact that he has vision of both Quop and Pangolier he is able to dive shadow shaman here. He is super tanky now with the extra strength and he can spin TP if things go south 
himself. He makes sure to check Shadow Shaman inventory and just pins it out. Since the fight keeps brewing mid, Miracle, that now has no Omni Slash, just starts pounding at the tier 2. He offers no team fight right now, and this is a way better use of his time and resources than going there. He keeps on pushing the limits of his safety and spins TP out, but only after getting another wave. Nicely done. This is the first team fight that Miracle joins, and pay attention how he farms his way towards the fight since he has no Omni Slash yet. At this point, he has no fighting presence without it. Another idea would be to push bottom, but the mid tier 1 is one of the most important towers, and bottom was quite pushed anyways. That move forces a lot of dire cooldowns, and they get nothing in return, while Juggernaut just keeps scaling with the help of Empower. The mid tier 1 is so important that he goes back again even though he was super close to the bottom tier 2 and this time he wants to use his recently purchased Shadow Blade. He only pops Shadow Blade when he's super close to the fight so that he has a lot of duration to work with and he goes on Pangolier that has a short range escape but more importantly that just use his escape. Note how he doesn't bother ulting until he gets locked with Pounce and that allows him to disengage afterwards, just beautiful. <sighs> One thing that I want to mention, and I already mentioned this somewhere else, is how Miracle attacks with Battle Fury. If you want to get me mad, comment on the video that I'm overanalyzing this. Watch this entire game, or any game, where Miracle or a high MMR player farms with Cliff and Crits. Pay attention how he rarely hits the same Crypt twice. The reason for this is that if you attack once, and then you Crit on another Crypt, you most likely kill the two Crypts that you attack with two attacks. Hope that makes sense. Now, if you attack once, you don't Crit, and then you attack that Crypt again and you Crit, you most likely not kill the second creep with cleave forcing you to go for a third attack and that adds up as creep waves grow and yeah that's that's pretty much it but yeah it actually over time allows you to farm more efficiently if you watch this game he has insane net worths even for a juggernaut with empower this is another great Omni Slash coming from Miracle. He TPs here, Silver Edges, and here he has 4 options of targets. Quap is obviously a bad one, Rubik has an instant disable, but pay attention how he waits until Rubik turns left so that he can attack and Omni Slash smoothly. That gives him a triple kill right off the bat. And since Quap commits the blink, he knows he can get another one, and there you go. Another reason to go Sanjin Yashi this game is that while Dyer has a lot of escapes like Pounce, OP, Buckle and Blink, Jugger with Face Boots and Silver Edge is super fast. As long as you proc one main instance, you will be able to keep chasing and that's a crispy rampage for our boy. While Blink Dagger could be a way to deal with the escapes, Silver Edge is an item that scales way better than Blink Dagger. It also offers 16 strength, which means that Jugger will rarely get bursted down in case Dyer is the one that engages with those instant spells. One thing I want to talk about as well is his Silver Edge usage. A lot of players commit their Shadow Blades or Silver Edge at all times. In a big part of those attempts, they find no kills, and the reason for that is that they don't understand how the enemies behave. If we go back from that rampage, and I will speed this up quite a bit, so I'm sorry if this is hard on your eyes, Miracle never used his Silver Edge in like 3 minutes. The reason for that is that all the lanes are pushed towards Radiant. He will not find anyone wandering on his jungle at the beginning because they're all dead, but later because Dire will be grouped up since everyone is leaving the base and they are farming in groups of two. But if you manage to push a wave enough that someone TPs there, then and you have people walking and TPing to that location and they will be easier kills since as I mentioned they are lone targets and subsequent TPs will take longer. So Miracle doesn't even use the Silver Edge during this entire time and as he pushes bottom here he can see 3 enemies in the mid lane, 4 with Slark, which means that now that he's pushing this catapult way forward it's pretty likely that he will find a target eventually. So during all this time this is the only attempt to go for a Silver Edge game. It fails, but the point here is to showcase the proper use of the item. Quop is probably the only target he wouldn't be able to kill, and even then he harasses her quite a bit, and a few seconds later we see another rampage. Let's see how he does it. Well, I talked a lot about his tankiness with this build, he knows that the entire Dire team is hiding there, but he has his Magnus behind, so he just turns the healing ward on and knows that even with all that instant disable, they will not be able to kill him. He pops his face boots and look how he hides in his ward in the trees during the shackle duration. There's no point in Omni slashing here since they already use all their cooldowns, so he kills Shadow Shaman, moves towards Lark and notice that Cop blink to get there and Slark commit a dark pack. He doesn't need to ult Slark because that's a full duration RP with no chance of a dark pack being procced. 
and since he saves it, he can Omni Slash Quap that doesn't have Blink. Lift is down, no spells till well Omni Slash plays, guaranteeing the fourth one and I lied. This was only an Ultra kill. This is one of the last fights from the game. First of all, going up like this is crazy, but he feels safe doing so because he has a sentry there, so it's unlikely that people are waiting for him, especially with Slark showing in the bottom lane. He doesn't find people straight away, but keep watching. Quap blinks aggressively here, so note how Miracle approaches the fight. He doesn't Abyssal Blade straight away, because there's still some time left for the blink cooldown. Unfortunately, after the Abyssal Blade proc, OP Angler stops him mid-murder, and I consider Quap not dying here the reason Juggernaut ends up dying at the end of this engagement. Note how he doesn't Blade Fury, or uses Healing Ward, or uses Omni Slash, there's no reason for it. He pops Healing Ward later on to maybe help allies, and it doesn't really work. And this is the first time he pops on his life. Pangolier used Swash Buckle and Shadow Dances down. That's one kill. He only played Furies when the Pounce was going to hit him, he kills Quop and almost kills Lark as well, just because of how farm he is. By the way, Skadi is great against heroes like Juggernaut and uh, Lifestealer. Know that the Skadi slow lingers even after Blade Fury gets committed, saving Private Rubik and ultimately killing our hero. Well guys, this is it for today, thanks for watching, this video is sponsored by Pugna, and if you want access to a huge library of videos and tips on how to get better at Dota, that are actually way better than, the, than Dota Plus, Pugna sponsors this channel, those guys are great, and they definitely improve this channel for the better. If you want to watch me stream, I have a very interesting way of streaming. You guys can choose which lane and which hero I'll play, and uh, and all of that is done via Twitch chat. I feel like it's very interactive and it's pretty fun. Check that out if you're interested, and that's it guys.